Hello, Programming 11. Hey, we're making the pew-pew game, and we can actually pew-pew. We can now aim our bullets, and that's great. But the game's a little bit boring because there's nothing to shoot at and nothing really that exciting to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in some obstacles. Obstacles are going to be very straightforward to make at first. Basically, an obstacle is going to just be a circle. Uh, we're going to randomly scatter them about the environment, the screen, and uh, from there, um, after we've actually positioned them, we'll teach the bullets to collide with them and either die or bounce off or do something interesting. Okay, so that's going to be our goal today in this video is to make obstacles. So just like anything in our, uh, in, in our game, we're going to base it off the game object foundation. Which means when I make a new object, which I'll do right now, I'm going to call it obstacle. Here's a new tab, sorry. Uh, and I make class object, uh, sorry, class obstacle. It's going to extend game object. And when I say extends game object, that means that it's going to get all these variables. It's going to have access to these constructors. It's going to get the show function, this act function, and this is dead function. So that's pretty fantastic. Um, we don't have to program all that in. We do have to make a constructor still. So we'll do that, and that's why this is highlighting as red, because we don't have a constructor yet. And I think I just want to kind of randomize it, just like scatter it all over the place. And so we already have a constructor that does that. This is sort of puts it in the random place, it sets it to not moving, it gives it a random size, it gives it a hit point, and so on. So, and a color. So I just have to send it a color. So I'm going to use purple for the color for the obstacle. So I'm going to just call the super class constructor, and I'm going to send it purple. And I, I don't need much else, to be honest, right now. That's, that's basically all I need, because it gets the show function already so it already is going to be able to show um, it doesn't even really need to move it's just going to be a blob uh, so it it's, doesn't really need an act function um, it's I, I intend to make them indestructible but I don't I don't care too much they can they can be um, <laughs> destructible for now so that's it that's all I gotta do uh, except that there's no obstacles yet <laughs> there's no obstacles they don't they don't show up in the game I actually have to build them. So that'll be a good exercise to do. Uh, I'm going to go to my main tab, and I'm going to scroll down to the setup, where I have all my game objects being initialized, things like I am making the player and adding it. So let's add some obstacles. I want to add, say, 100 obstacles into this uh, project. So I would have to make some kind of loop. So I'll make a counting variable, and I'll go to 100, or whatever, you know, whatever you think is appropriate. And I'm going to put in um, I++ to make sure I go to the next one, and don't forget that. And I'll say objects.add new obstacle. And it'll call this constructor 100 times, generating 100 purple game objects, <laughs> which are also obstacles, which aren't really special just yet. So if I run this, check it out. Oh, so many objects. Look at that. I just got a bunch. It's like, like a Jackson Pollock painting, really, right now. <laughs> so I got a hundred objects. And did you see how like simple that was? I know at the beginning of this project, with all this game object stuff and in the game, you know, making this while loop, to process all the objects, it seemed like a lot of work to begin with. But doing all that work up front now means that we just have to design new classes, which can be very simple, and then just create them and add them into our project. And they'll automatically start working because objects is processed already by an array, uh, sorry, a loop. So that's pretty fantastic. Um, these are pretty boring obstacles at the moment. They don't do a whole lot, so we might want to go in and uh, add in some interesting features for them. Uh, one feature could be 
uh, bouncing off. I think for now, I'm just going to do a, a check to see if, it, if the bullet touches the obstacle. Then I'm just going to make it die. It's going to make the bullet disappear. So how would we do that? So I would probably put this in the bullet class uh, and in the act function of the bullet class. So it's going to do super.act and it will the bullet will disappear if it goes off screen. And then I'll also do a check for collisions to see if it's going to be you know colliding with any kind of uh, obstacle. So to do that, I need some kind of a while loop. So pretty much the same structure as our previous while loop we made, int i equals zero, while i is less than, oh wait, now how far does this have to go? Well, it needs to go and look at all the objects that are in the objects list. So I'll say objects.size. And I'll put in that i++ plus plus to make sure I don't forget. So that we go to the next object. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get an object. I'm going to check to see if it's an obstacle and check to see if I'm colliding with it. And if I am, then congratulations, I will destroy the bullet. <laughs> so here's how this will go. So I will get an object um, that it's colliding with. So to get an object out of the list, you say objects.getI. I starts at zero, so if the, if we, the first time through this list, we'll get object zero. Then it will become one because we increase it by one. So the next time we'll get object one, then we'll get object two, and so on. And eventually we'll get to the end of the list. So I'm going to store it in a temporary variable. So it's a game object. I'm going to call it obj. It's kind of a lame name, but it's, it's a generic thing right now. There's a bunch of objects. There's bullets. There's obstacles, there's players, there'll be even more later on. So I don't really know what it is just yet. So I'll just give it a generic name and then I'll check to see if the object is a obstacle, uh, sorry, is an obstacle. So I can say instance of a new keyword that we're learning here, obstacle. And then that can become a new uh, thing. So check it out. I am going to say, hey, are you, is this object I found, is it an obstacle? I don't want to see if I'm colliding with other bullets. I want to see if I'm colliding with other obstacles. So if, it's a, if it is an obstacle, then what I can do is I can um, destroy the bullet. Well, I guess I have to check to see if it's touching first. So then I have to do that whole math where I check if the distance between the bullet and the obstacle is less than the sum of their radii. So I can say if the distance between the objects x uh, and y and the bullets x and y is less than the sum of their radii. So object dot size divided by 2 plus size divided by 2. Then I can... I guess I've found an obstacle and I am colliding with it, so I'll set the bullet's HP to zero. Yay! So that works out quite nicely to just destroy bullets when they hit obstacles. So this is a loop that's just processing all the collisions it could have. So let's run that and see. And you can see that the bullets, anytime they hit an obstacle, just crash and 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 are removed from the game so that's um seems pretty good i i think it's working okay yeah it would be nice to be able to make sure the player doesn't run into obstacles but um yeah we won't worry about that too much right now okay so there we go we have a nice uh set of obstacles and uh, when the bullet hits them, they are colliding and can't get through. If you wanted to do some kind of a bounce instead of the the bullet dying, then what you could do is you could, if you find a collision and you find uh, you know an obstacle that you're colliding with, then you could recalculate the vx and the vy. So I could say. Uh, basically, I would probably do the same thing as I did with the, the aiming with the p-vector. 
So I do a p vector um, aim, or I'm going to call it bounce, equals new p vector. And then it's going to be the difference between, oh, I can't remember now, is it is it object minus bullet or bullet minus obstacle? I have to think about that. I'm just gonna just gonna guess. I'm just gonna guess. It, you might have to change this. So so let's see what the result is. Mm -hmm. An object minus y. So I'm just gonna guess that that's the case. Um, bounce dot set mag to ten. So it's still the same speed. And I guess I would then set VX to bounce.x and VY to bounce.y. Let's find out. I might have got them backwards. So let's see. Oh, yeah. See how they're getting sucked in? That is pretty neat. Oh, it's so weird. Uh, it's like they're getting sucked into these things. So I got it backwards. It's kind of a cool effect, though. I, I don't mind it. But it's not what I wanted. These aren't supposed to be bullet collectors. So instead of them bouncing off, they're getting sucked in. So that means they've just reversed this. So I'm just going to switch this around. So I'll make this x minus object dot x and y minus object dot y. And now it's going to just work. Watch this. <clears throat> they, be they just bounce. Because every frame, what's happening is that uh, every bullet is looping through every single object and checking to see if it's colliding. Every frame, every bullet is doing that calculation. And it's amazing that we're like not dropping frames, really. Like if I shoot a whole bunch of bullets, like I think eventually we'll start dropping frames. But um, like it's it's pretty pretty solid. Like it's, we're not really dropping anything. Uh, yeah, and I'm not running like some fancy computer by any means. It's a pretty uh, average Dell tablet laptop type thing, so uh, it's reasonable. Yeah, we can see how many objects, if you were to zoom in, I don't know if my zoom program is ready to go. You can see how many objects are on the screen. It's not really that much, uh, 200 so I'm just trying to crank that number up, see if we can get it in way higher. It's at the 300s, uh, 400s. A nice pocket where we could just pile them on. Uh, this looks like I can get too much higher than 400. Oh, yeah, I guess I. Well, that, this is a nice little pocket to get a bunch of bullets in. Um, it doesn't seem to be able to get over 400. Eventually, the bullets do hit the edge of the screen and are destroyed. So it looks like we're able to, um, you know. Kind of stabilize at 400, but I think we could add actually thousands of objects and we'd still be okay. Ooh, this is a nice little path trajectory that's uh, getting us up to 490. Oh, we got the 500. Nice, nice. So you know, it's still holding well. The frames aren't dropping. Anyways, this is pretty fun. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, our bullets are now becoming smarter. They are bouncing off of things, uh, specifically obstacles, and, and see how simple it can be now to create new objects. A lot of the work is already done for us in game object, and that's I'm hoping you're starting to see the power of the super class and our approach here to designing this game. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the discussion channel, and I'll try and do a better job of answering those questions. Um, you know, maybe I didn't explain things too clearly, or maybe it was not. Um, maybe I went over it too fast. So let me know. Thanks, everybody.